Dr. Morris, one of the things that I noticed was nowadays, it seems like this word health coach is everywhere, whether you turn on the television or you're walking down the street and you see a sign or you meet somebody that you just hear the word health coach all the time. You mentioned the 90s. I think you were you were probably very ahead of your time. I mean, I was a little bit young in the 90s. So I wasn't really looking out for health coaches, but I didn't really remember hearing about that that much in the 90s. Nowadays, I probably hear it 50 times a day. And it could mean anything from somebody who sells a certain brand of coconut water online to somebody who's doing some, trying to do something similar to what you're doing um, and everything in between. So, you know, what I wondered was, what does that term mean? And what should people look out for if they were going to, you know, require services or work with a health coach? Yeah, great question. You know, I think when we are a health consumer, and at some point in time, we all, even ourselves, right, we're all health consumers. And so part of being a knowledgeable health consumer is being aware of what you're actually looking for, right? And, and not to get pulled down in the weeds, so to speak, to really have a little bit of information uh, that you can use to make sure that you are finding somebody that's that's credible, that's reputable, that has the skills, the experience, and the techniques to actually help you in whatever area of health you're trying to improve. So when we think about health and wellness coaching, uh, it's not unlike any other healthcare professions. We are credentialed uh, mm -hmm. professionals, healthcare professionals. And so the very first thing that I tell all clients is that you want to look for somebody that that actually holds a standard credential, that they've gone through an accredited program. So, for mm -hmm. example, like MUIH, we have an accredited institution, which is accredited. The institution in itself is accredited by Middle States uh, Higher Education Commission. Then each department usually has their own credentialing or accrediting agencies that accreditate or credential the specific discipline that the students are training in. So with health and wellness coaching, our credentialing agencies are the International Coaching Federation and the National Board for Health and Wellness Coaching. So when our students come out of our program, uh, they are eligible to go take the credentialing or, or credentialing exam for NBHWC, the National Board for Health and Wellness Coaching, or ICF, the International Coaching Federation. This guarantees to a large extent that the students are very aware of the practicing standards, the professional ethics, mm -hmm. and all of the standards of practice and scope of practice that fall within their given profession. The way other people might be able to identify with this more readily is it's no different than a doctor going through board examinations or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. All healthcare professionals to some degree have some sort of, if they're moving through a credentialed practice, they'll have some sort of credentialing exam, board exams. And so the, one of the things that you want to look for as a health consumer is that you want to be looking primarily for coaches that have some credentialing and have some training and or experience. Uh, one of the things about MUIH versus other, other uh, health and wellness coaching preparation programs is that we're not a training program, we're an academic program. Mm -hmm. So students and, and coaches that come through our program they actually receive either a post certificate or a master's degree specifically related to health and wellness coaching. And then they can go on and get that credential in coaching. So those are some very, very important things that I look at when I, and when I'm also working with clients to tell them as a consumer, you want to look at. The other thing that you want to know about health and wellness coaching is that we're not prescriptive by nature. We're not directive by nature. Okay, so if you have a, a health and wellness coach that says to you, hey, you need to eat this. Hey, you need to do this exercise. Hey, you need to practice in these stress manage management techniques. And they're prescribing and directing. That's really not within the scope of practice of a health and wellness coach. Again, our job is to guide and facilitate an individual through their own process. We help a client explore what they think is best for them. We mm -hmm. don't tell a client what is best for them. And that's very different than a lot of Western medicine. Like right. when we go to our physician, you know, they'll say, okay, take this medication, take it this many times a day. Or if you're at a physical therapist, they'll say, do these exercises, do them this many times a day. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There is a place for prescription and recommendation and, and that sort of thing within medicine. But when we're talking about behavior change, we have to be ready to willingly adapt and modify our own behavior. Nobody can twist anybody's arm and say, you're going to do it this way, right? In order for it to stick or what we say maintain behavior, we really have to ensure that the person is willing and ready to change. And so the big part of a coach is to explore where someone is in their behavior change process. So if you're a consumer and you're looking at a potential coach and that coach is telling you, 
what to eat, how to eat, what to exercise, how to exercise. I would highly recommend staying away from that because that's not within the scope of practice uh, mm -hmm. for a coach. And, and then also be very careful uh, that if you're looking for coaches, that they're not coaching to sell a product. Mm -hmm. um, as a coach, we don't sell products. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we are in the business of helping people recognize and become more aware of their own behavior and their own process and mm -hmm. how that either benefits change for them or how it can interfere with, for change for them, right? And so those are things, those are three big things that I'll tell any health consumer that you want to be paying close attention to when you're looking for that health and wellness coach, if you're wanting one to help you with, uh, you know, changing your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Those are great points and you explained them so clearly. And I think that'll really help people be able to navigate that field. Thank you so much.